audio. I am doing a, a tin hat topic alone today because I've got this wonderful idea and I just can't wait for the girls. Okay. So I've got the tin hat in the background. I'm not going to put it on today, but uh, I think I've got some stuff here that uh, perhaps you, you will enjoy. Let's see if I can get myself in order here and find out where I'm at. Um, screen share. Yeah. Let's just share. Put me out of the way and pull up this. Okay. First of all, um, Shelly over at No Place Like Home. I think most of you are familiar with her. She's lovely. She had this question, the narrative here on satyrs, fawns, and goatmen. Very, very interesting. And what it did, of course, was spurred some interest for me. And I just, I'm like, oh my goodness. And what about this? And what about this? And what about this? You know, type of thing. So anyway, I, I wanted to pull up a few things. This particular picture that she shared and uh, yeah, photos.com by Getty Images. Uh, it was actually linked on the archive.org website. And list it is. I cannot speak French, so I shouldn't pretend. Anyway, this was the one that really, really got me. And she she mentioned, she read out of the, the Book of Enoch, the size. And of course, the size of the, the Nephilim was in L's. So if you look in the Bible, the size is going to be in cubits and in the book of Enoch, it's in L's. We don't really know what that is and trying to convert that to um, feet, yards, meters, what, you know, whatnot is kind of hard. But what I got here was we've got this arch way here and most of us are just going to look at this image and we're going to say, oh, wow. You know, it's a bunch of, you know, plain. And in in uh, movies and things, they usually depict them like it, Chronicles of Narnia is one of the ones I'm most familiar with. We have seen some, I don't know if we've seen them all, but some of the Percy Jackson movies, I haven't read the books on the Percy Jackson, so I don't know, but they usually depict the satyrs as just being human shaped or, or human size, or, or maybe even smaller, like, like they're small and demure. But if you think about this arch, so I was going to pull up like these triumphant arches, right? If you think about an arch and what it actually is, then what do we have? We've got, this was a very interesting website. My picture keeps ending up in the way. Um, this is classicist.org. And this is some information about triumphal arch, arch designs. And I, I didn't read it because it's probably, <clears throat> you know, um, but here, here's an arch. I think these are some people, the heads of some people. Um, so it's huge, right? And here's another arch and here's people down here. It's huge, right? And then it goes into some buildings. And even, I mean, some of these buildings have got, of course, these huge arches in them. Huge arches, right? Okay. And it was funny because I don't use Canva. And, and if you do online creative things at all a lot of people now either use adobe photoshop or canva and i happen to dislike both of them okay i've been doing uh design uh commercial design well i don't i don't want to admit how long right since before the internet we'll put it that way. And um, before the internet, there were two particular programs. There was Printmaster and 
print shop. Okay. And I did not like print shop. I liked print master. Okay. And so I use a program called pick monkey, which used to have a free version like Canva does. Um, but it doesn't anymore. I don't think. And I, I thought I'm going to type in for the stock photos. I'm going to type in Seder and see what happens. And it came up with arches. I'm like, seriously? And then I typed in fawn because that's what in Chronicles of Narnia is called. And I think that's the difference between the Greek and the Roman names. You know, one is Seder and one is fawn. Same basic creature. And that one fawn on pig monkey and i'm not saying anything against pig monkey these are people that submit images to be used for stock photos you know or whatever so i don't know if pig monkey actually goes in and picks photos or or how that works but the stuff that was coming up with fawns with satyrs it was like these architectural pieces for the most part and for fawn it was coming up with um, witches and red shoes and yeah, some, some really more occult type stuff. And I'm like, well, that is interesting. I wonder why. Unfortunately, with some of this, there were also pictures of children and which, uh, Shelly mentioned in her bit video, the uh, Pied Piper story and, the earliest mention of the Pied Piper was in like city minutes uh, from Hamlin that said, it's been a hundred years since our children went missing and just sad. And that was like in 1300 and something just sad. So uh, when you're talking about something like this, it's not, it's not neat. And, um. So as a matter of fact, here, here is an image that I came up with on archive.org and I had to download it and uh, doctor the image just a bit. There's actually a medical condition in men that is named after one of these creatures. Uh, they had a problem. Okay. And Debbie did allude to that. Definitely. So she talked about how the satyrs were known to hang out with Dionysus, a um, little G God. Okay. And who uh, I totally agree with Shelly was probably a real creature, a real entity, uh, whether or not this entity was one of the watchers or a nephilim i i'm still trying to sort all of that out because it kind of says that all of the titans all come from uh chronos and rhea which is the sky and the earth well the watchers came from the sky and mated with women on earth right so yeah, the first Titans were probably the first Nephilim. And then after that, the Nephilim, I don't know how they accomplished breeding with people if they were as big as they were, but something happened in there, you know, or yeah, it, it probably some genetic manipulation or something. I have no idea what all happened, but there were 200 watchers and who knows how many children they had. And then, you know, you've got like a thousand years at least in there that they could, there could be more children, more genetic manipulation going on and, and things happening. So this particular arch, it's hard to say what size it is because there's not like a person in here, uh, but this is a, this is Dionysus's arch, I guess. Um, so that was kind of interesting. And then we have uh, this one. I mean, these are some amazing, huge, huge, you know, things. And, and here's one here in America. And just big. Here, here is one. I can't remember. This is in, I think, Glasgow. So here's horses 
horses under the arch. So if these satyrs were playing under this arch and they were coming up to, you know, this one right here is inside and he's coming up to the top there. So if they were that tall, I mean, that's pretty stinking tall, you know, very interesting. And then this is, I, I ran up into a couple of interesting things now. Um, and my husband actually was helping. First of all, here we've got the feet. Now this one is obviously a woman with a child here and my husband noticed this now this creature here he looks like he's either got some kind of horn coming up above his head or or this is his ear or something I don't know but then you've got this staff with a snake on top of it oh my like, okay that's interesting and I looked up Sater and I want to be careful with the images. Uh, like Shelly was trying to be careful in case you have children, you know, just as soon as you send them out of the room to watch something, then they're going to sneak around and, but I need a drink and I need to go potty and all the things. Right. Um, so here's according to a fra fragment of some such or other Satyrs are the sons of the five granddaughters of this particular um cultural hero uh the primordial king of Argos interesting and therefore si siblings of these uh somewhere else described let's see the sons of yeah Olympos and somebody else and this other one, and these are writers, literary writers or whatever I'm assuming, observes there may be more than one way to produce a satyr as there is to produce a cyclops or a centaur. I'm like, oh, really? There may be more than one way to produce a satyr. How interesting. And somewhere in the Wikipedia article, and I hate to do much of a search because like I said, the images are kind of nasty, um, even on Wikipedia. So be careful. Uh, it, it did call them demons even. So that was interesting because the book of Enoch does say that the Nephilim are, whenever they die, then their spirits become demons. So we had a couple of different ones and their parents are like Titans and, and things, but it has a whole list of satyrs here. Okay. Very interesting. And this one, uh, this is the Herald of Dionysus, um, who this one was killed by this one, when Dionysus in his campaign against India, you know, and I'm assuming these are things that probably happened before the flood. So we like to put Greek and Roman myths uh, in the in little bit BC in AD, you know, somewhere in there, usually no more than a thousand years BC. And I, I think that's a misplace of most of it. Uh, the huge architecture. I'm talking the really, really, really big stuff. Uh, and then some of these stories are probably pre-flood stories that are just being assigned to the Greeks and Romans that we know. Okay. So... Here was one, this one may be I refer to various figures. Um, and we're talking some of the Titans and stuff. Uh, I, I just, I think where some of this goes, talking about the Titans it is very, very interesting. Um, 
and we're talking about a war with India and in India has some very interesting creatures as well. Right. And, um, Shelly mentioned that the satyrs liked chasing the nymphs and I'm like, well, I wonder if the nymphs had anything to do with the sirens and there are sea nymphs. I don't see that the sea nymphs are actually like mermaids. Um, I, I haven't gone just like super, super deep, but it, it made me kind of wonder if the sea nymphs, if, if that couldn't have been part of where some of the mermaids have come from, because let's see the book of Enoch and we like the R.H. Charles version. Okay. Uh, it says, and the women also of the angels who went astray shall become sirens. Okay. So that's where we get that is the Bible doesn't tell us what happens to the women, but the book of Enoch does. And I think it is the first book of Enoch is a credible source because it's quoted so many times in the Bible. So whether it should be in the canon or not, I don't want to debate that one, but um, it definitely it's quoted in the Bible. So I, I think it, it's a credible source of information, definitely as credible as Greek and Roman myths, right? <laughs> More so. So sirens and mythology could either be like bird-like creatures or um, mermaid-like creatures, okay? And let's see, does it say, it says where they appear? nomenclature icon early, early siren mermaids family tree let's see they're usually daughters of the river god some such or other okay either by a muse or these different things but of course the book of enoch says that they were the ones who willingly mated with the watchers were turned into sirens. So this is interesting. So we've got a couple of different things. So could this be, we're calling it a siren, right? Could they have actually had more children afterwards? And could that, I mean, after God changed them, could they have mated still after God changed them? And, or or I don't know. I I don't know. It it makes you wonder, especially with all of the stories of them later and the nymphs and the mermaids and, and things. It makes me wonder. Here was another one. What was I looking for on this one? I think this was supposed to be. This was one of the wives consort of Zeus and her offspring were Apollo and Artemides. And Artemides usually had something to do with the nymphs and stuff. I don't remember what it was, but very interesting. And, and who was she? Her, her parents were two of the Titans. So well, that's interesting. Children of, again, Uranus and Gaia. Uranus, the sky, and Gaia. Did I say, who did I say? Earth? Uh, anyway, Uranus, the sky, and Gaia, the earth. So, all right. So, we have Nereids. So, the, I think this was one of the uh, terms for the nymphs. Yeah. They're, they're, okay, they're the sea nymphs, and they were supposedly the $50 daughters of the old man of the sea and the Osnid, or that's what they're called, Doris, great myth, was a sea goddess. So, yeah, it makes me wonder if the nymphs were children of the sirens, if the sirens actually had more children after that. I don't know. And this is some more information about that, them. 
And we've got, okay, Greek deities, sirens, their primordial deities, titans, Olympians, and it's giving you some information, water deities, and it gives you all these different ones, the naiads. Very interesting depictions on some of these. Very old. Nymphs, these are nymphs. So it just made me, made me wonder. Oh, that's a series. Anyway, just made me wonder, what do they have to do with the, do they have anything to do with the si sirens? And the, there are several different kinds of dryads. Yeah, different ones. Just very interesting. Let's see. Yeah, and I thought that was interesting too. This, I mean, look at the size of these buildings. And this almost looks like it's a steeple on top of a building. And this looks like one of those little toppers, like they're fighting on the roof of a building. You know? I don't know how you got the goat up there in the first place. But very interesting another thing that she mentioned uh and i hope you've i hope you've seen shelly's video another thing that she mentioned was singer pennsylvania and i thought hmm that's interesting not far from us we also have a sare oklahoma so i thought i wonder what kind of stories there could be about Sarah, Oklahoma. Well, Sarah, Oklahoma is, has an ancient Buffalo kill site. This is out on the prairie route, right? They've dated it back to about 300 BC. I'm, you know, sketchy on the, the, you know, the information. I couldn't find anything about a satyr or a fawn. I know down on the Texas, the river in between Texas and Oklahoma, uh, there's a bridge down there somewhere that there have been stories. There's also been stories of one over by Tulsa. Uh, so we do have stories out here uh, about fawns goat man that type of thing out in our area there's more bigfoot and dog man as a matter of fact i was gone over the weekend and my husband hosted as some cryptid uh christian cryptid uh podcasters and really uh, they come out every once in a while and and they try to get some sightings and stuff and they have some interesting stories to tell so he kind of took them around some different places and they had their drone up and it was kind of fun I guess and I miss the fun but that's okay uh but yeah they came out here to see that so I haven't heard of goat man or anything like that out here but we do have Bigfoot my husband is actually seeing uh Bigfoot prints out here which he said were exactly like a man's footprints, except larger. Okay. So they don't look like a majority of like the big footprints that you usually see pictures of. He said they actually had uh, looked exactly like a human footprint, except just very, very big. And then uh, the dog man, I guess, runs around with the coyotes. So interesting and uh, some of the native americans have stories too they're a little less likely to share with some people but there is a difference between dog man and and uh, werewolf so that's something to take note of according to the native americans out here so um anyway uh there's some haunted places it, it says in sarah oklahoma but that's not what they're talking about so uh, there's several different legends and I tell you this this is just a few this is 10 and they're saying the best ones well they don't know some of the best ones but one of the and that was very sad um one of them that I got was this right here a shapeshifter the stickini I don't know if I'm saying that right 
but I'm not Seminole. I'm, I'm Cherokee slash maybe some, yeah. Anyway, I, I do have Native American on both sides, but not Seminole. Uh, so the sticky knee are human by day. And then at night, um, they, it vomits its internal organs, which allow it to shape shift into an owl. So it gives up an owl pellet and turns into an owl. And, uh, and then before daybreak, it returns its organs and swallows them to return into human form. And if you hear the cry of it, you will die. That's very interesting. In a way, that kind of sounds like siren. It, it almost does. Uh, because some of the stories of sirens or what is the one, the silky? you know, and I don't know if that's a siren or not, but if you hear it's cry, yeah, <laughs> so very interesting, and, in, and in how they put this in with an owl, and there's a lot of, you know, occult things that have to do with an owl, and even one of the Greek goddesses, I can't remember which one, had an owl companion, so that's very interesting indeed. So anyway, I uh, I thought this was interesting. I don't remember if Shelley actually shared where in the Bible the satyrs are mentioned. Isaiah is is where the two references in the King James Version are. And it talks about the owls shall dwell there and the satyrs shall dance there. And then wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island and the satyr shall cry to his fellow and the screech owl again also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest. So I just, you know, maybe it has absolutely nothing to do, you know, maybe I'm, I'm making connections out of strangeness. I, I don't know. I, I could be, but some some very interesting very interesting thoughts and and I just my biggest thing was this this image here that I just really wanted to bring everybody's attention to it's not only Seder revelry which was bad just bad um but this archway being you know most of the you know triumphal arches or whatever that we see today are huge so it, it I felt like it gave some perspective here on what their size might have been you know and if these were like third fourth or fifth generation Nephilim then they wouldn't have been as large as the first ones right and a lot of times they are depicted with the little cherubim things which these are not angels guys these are not angels that no uh-uh that that's Nephilim creature of some sort and there was one depiction of uh one of these little guys just really trying to beat the tar out of one of the satyrs and it's like hmm he was upset at him for some reason wasn't he and it's hard to say what was going on I can pick up stories in my brain but I'm not going to go through the whole John Levi and this is what this guy was saying and this is what this guy was saying and yeah this guy looks like he's hiding um anyway that's pretty cute whenever he does that but um I also wanted to mention uh if you're on Twitter uh I've got at her prairie underscore dust I'm there and uh I'm there myself Donita Fogelman, I do different things. If you just want to see kind of the basics of what we're publishing, that's mostly going to be on the Prairie Dust side of things. If you want more updates and some of my sass, then that's going to be on my personal one. So I have a lot of fun with that. Um, and if you're on Instagram, again, we've got Prairie Dust, and this is where I kind of just post these are pretty new 
And then I have my own personal one, which is a little older. And again, I will add some additional sass in here. So I wanted to invite you all, if you're on those places and you would like to follow me, then, you know, that would, that would be awesome. And also on prairie-trail.com, we have the podcast and I have helpful, mostly helpful information on the podcast. That's the new one, biblical or herbalism. Can a Christian be an herbalist? Can Christians use herbs? Um, what in the world education uh this is a wonderful thing even if you don't homeschool if you have children with you on a regular basis grandchildren over the summer and stuff her uh her audio tapes and stuff are wonderful and they they would be a wonderful addition to your summer program uh so anyway i've got a lot of fun interesting and some very um you know just trying to be encouraging we are living in a really hard world right now. So I've got the blog, which I do updates and different things on the blog as well. Some things about Passover and whatnot. I have some uh, challenges. I have different Bible studies that are available. And of course, we just, we've got the goats, the rabbits, the golden retrievers, um, some different things here. I have nearly everything you could ever want as far as basic homeschooling we're on our last child for homeschooling she's 16 so pray for me um, but uh we we've had six and and we get five down one to go and so we've been through it and i homeschooled from the very beginning our children never went to an institution so uh, here's some homeschooling basics based on my experience and uh, experience of others around me. And so I've got some basics, learning styles and personality traits, tools and schedule, art, which is something that a lot of people are concerned about and get worried about, uh, curriculum, how do you choose that and what's going to be best for your family. Um just several different kind of explaining what the different things are and how you can do this delayed academics. That's, that's one that is just really key as far as I'm concerned as well, as well as the Charlotte Mason, the living books, and then high school and uh, simplifying the high school thing. A lot of people get really concerned about what to do for high school and uh, it's, it's not rocket science at all. It's very, very simple not always easy, but simple. And then of course, uh, if you're interested in our quarterly Bible-based magazine, it's an e-publication that comes in the email and it's just kind of trying to help connect readers with skills from the past and just give a real biblical encouragement on helping you to become more prepared and live more sustainably where you are. You don't have to be a homesteader to get good information out of this magazine. Um, you can do it with an apartment and a little balcony or a community garden or just kitchen window. Okay. So anyway, I would like to invite you uh, to all those fun places and I will stop sharing. So I hope that some of that was fun and helpful and uh, hopefully you got something out of it. If you have other information that you can add, I'm really trying to put together who were the sirens. Um, you know, they're going to have different names and different cultures and stuff and which ones were the Nephilim, which ones were the watchers. Uh, when you're talking about like the Titans, uh, there were 200 watchers and I haven't just narrowed it down to see how many Titans there were in each culture to see if it adds up to the 200, but I'm kind of trying to put that together with everything else going on, of course. So 
Anyway, I think that's all I've got this time. And I really appreciate you being here. If you haven't subscribed, please do and click the like button and all that good stuff and pop over to Shelly's channel and say, Hey, uh, because, uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. So we will see y'all later.